Welcome to another episode of Motocross Action's First Ride. I'm Darrell Eklund, Managing Editor of Motocross Action Magazine. In front of us, we got the 2019 Honda CRF 250. One year ago, Honda reinvented the CRF 250. It was in desperate need of a change from the low to mid engine of 2010 to 2017. It was easy to ride, but to make it an effective race bike required that buckets of money be dumped into the engine to bring it up to contemporary standards. The CRF 250 went from being MXA's 2009 shootout winner to being fourth in 2010. In that time, Honda lost its mojo with Honda Loyalists. CRF 250 sales shrank as Yamaha and KTM took advantage of Honda's benign neglect. In 2018, Honda's R&D department got the budget to build an all-new CRF 250. On paper, it looked like a world better. Sadly, something got lost in translation. The 2018 engine was worse than ever. Why did it fail? On the plus side of the equation, the 2018's top-end power was close to what was being offered by KTM and Husqvarna. The 2018 CRF 250 lacked any low to mid power. Strangely, although designed to rev to 14,000 RPM, Honda put a soft rev limiter in at 12,000 RPM. That killed off the final 2,000 RPM of top end power that was needed to make the high RPM gamble work. The 2018 CRF 250 engine was muted. It felt like an old CR125 two stroke instead of a broad, powerful, high RPM four stroke. The Honda engine started grenading not too long after they left the showroom floor. The clutch baskets were exploding, which forced a recall of every CRF 250 made. It was a tough year for the CRF 250. Honda needed a new 254 stroke engine for 2019. One with more low, a broader mid, and a top that could be used to the max. Because of the Japanese manufacturer's monotonous four-year production cycle, a new engine wasn't on the horizon. That didn't mean small changes couldn't make big improvements. Honda's engineers had no choice but to go to work. Since Honda's R&D department spent the big budget building a lemon in 2018, they had to find a way to fix the 2019 Serie 250 power band with band-aids, splints, and hacks. For 2019, Honda changed the cam profile, exhaust port, shortened the right side exhaust pipe by 50 millimeters, the piston oil jet got five nozzle holes instead of four, the AC generator was redesigned, the clutch got the updated basket and judder spring that were used in the 2018 recall, and a smaller 44 millimeter key and throttle body that replaced the 46 millimeter throttle body. As for the rest of the package, luckily, Honda only had to make small changes to the suspension and chassis. For 2019, Honda added a mode launch control, wrap around fork guards, switch the 7 8 rental bars to overside inch and 1 8 rental fat bars. The front brake caliper has a larger 30 millimeter piston to work in unison with the previous 27 millimeter piston. The top triple clamp now features two handlebar locations. The DID Dirt Star rims were changed from silver to black and the foot pegs are 20% lighter and have a new shape to shed mud more easily. Right up front, we want every loyal Honda CRF 250 owner to know that the 2019 CRF 250 has a much better power plant than the 2018 model. That power plant produces two more horsepower from 8,000 to 10,000 RPM and one to two more ponies from 10,000 to 11,200 RPM. Those gains pumped up peak horsepower from 42.8 .40 compared to last year's 40.68. On the dyno, the 2019 CRF 250 produces more power on every part of the RPM curve than its 2019 predecessor. However, are those numbers good enough to compete with the competition? Do you want the good news or the bad news? The good news is that only three tenths of a horsepower separate the Honda, KTM, and Husqvarna at peak. It reigns as the horsepower king from 10,000 RPM all the way to 12,200 RPM by as much as a horse and a half. The bad news is that even after gaining two more ponies off the bottom, it is still four horsepower off the KX250 at 7,000 RPM, more than two horsepower off the YZ250F at 8,000 RPM, and a horse and a half off the KTM250 SXF at 9,000 RPM. On the dyno, the Honda CRF 250 doesn't start stretching its legs until late in the game at 10,000 RPM. On the track, the CRF 250 engine offers improved throttle response that gets to the meat of the power bank quicker and pulls harder on top. The power curve tracks the exact same linear curve as last year's CRF 250, but with more power across the board. In motion, 
it lacked any snap down low. The CRF250 was hard to keep on the pipe coming out of corners. It was sluggish from low to mid. The bulk of the 250 four-stroke riders need immediate power and torque on tap to get the bike moving towards the upper RPM range. Every MX-8 test rider whined about the low to mid transition, just as they did with the 2018 engine. Is there a quick fix to help the sluggish bottom end? Not really, but swapping out the tall 1348 gearing combo for a lower 1349 setup allowed test riders to abuse the clutch less out of corners and get to the sweet spot of the power band quicker. As far as the chassis, testers didn't have much to complain about. It offers great ergonomics that make the rider feel right at home. Our only handling complaint was that the Sierra F250 oversteered at turn-in when running the recommended 105 millimeters of sag. Dropping the sag to 107 millimeters or more gave the test rider increased consistency coming into and getting out of corners. Some test riders also dropped the forks into the clamps to lift the front of the chassis and put more weight on the rear. The Sierra F250 tracked better with more sag and was definitely more stable at speed. In the air, the Sierra F250 feels much lighter than it really is. Racers who move around a lot in the air felt that the 2019 Sierra F250 was the lightest bike in its class. However, on the scales, it weighs 228 pounds. It is 10 pounds heavier than the 2019 KTM 250SXF and 5 pounds heavier than the 2019 KTM 450SXF. After struggling with Honda's forks for the last couple years, the return of coil spring forks is a welcome relief. These are good forks. Lighter testers felt they were a bit stiff but they are easy to set up for most riders. They have a supple feel at the top of the stroke and gradually ramp up in firmness without any harsh spots. We acknowledge Honda for spending R&D money on the botched 2018 CRF250 power plant. The money was well spent on the 2019 engine. It is better in every way. However, every MXA test rider still complain about the lack of bottom end. It is an engine package that is too one-dimensional for its own good. As for the rest of the CRF250, MXA test riders had nothing but good things to say about the CRF250 suspension and chassis. The bike is capable of being a complete package once Honda figures out the engine. For the complete article of the 2019 Honda CRF250, pick up the March issue of Motocross Action Magazine. As always, check out our website, motocrossactionmag.com, for all the 2019 tests, all the updated news on the riders, as well as the 2019 Supercross season that's starting up in January.